this chapter had a lot of setup, but somehow I still think it's one of the best chapters in the Real Champions Tournament, mainly because of what specifically it sets up. Not only the fight between Agito versus Lo Long, but also other characters as well, like surprisingly, Wakatsuki. I'm going to talk a bit more about that later on, but for now, let's just break down the chapter itself, starting from the beginning, and the chapter's name is called Tent champion and we start off with a character i don't think we've seen him in a while tuko or nitoko or am i even saying that right it's nitoku i think that's another way you can say it or toku either way he's back and is around the real champions tournament and so my guess is that of course he wants to take a look at these fights over here because these are big fights that are happening in this tournament. But also it seems like he's also looking for some inspiration as well. We'll see that later on. But he's there, he's writing his novel or whatever he's writing right now. And we see people that of course we knew were in the real champions tournament area already. And that was Medell and Liu. They pull up on him and the first thing they call question is what the hell Nikoto is wearing and I gotta admit this does kind of look whack I'm not gonna lie but I'm not a fashion person myself admittedly but they talk about how they weren't able to get to the playoffs and we get a reveal here that of course Toku had fought Kano Akito for this spot Agito beat him specifically it seems because he says that he lost to Agito in the playoffs so yeah that confirms that the second match for the second slot in the Kengen Association was either gonna go to Toku or Agito which is very interesting considering the idea that Toku may have actually fought Julius and we may have actually had that entire scenario but Toku lost his fight against Agito obviously because Agito is the one in this tournament but he hasn't given up he's even gone for more training with Cosmo so Cosmo we have confirmation that he is training of course he would be in a time like this we do know that everyone was out here training because of course the connector was on the scene but also in general right we even get some updates on Sekabayashi and what he's doing and that is actually training in sumo with Koizan. So you have quite a few characters leveling up or at least trying to level up during this time but we get even more confirmation which I wonder how Toku actually knows this but Wakatsuki has gone to the Gakigahara forest and that is a very significant area because we do know that this is where a whole bunch of the Nikos apparently die right and we can also see this place symbolically as where the Niko style sort of splits off into let's say three different directions right you have Gaio Mukaku who abandoned it and you have Tiger Nico we're gonna call him Tiger Nico who goes on to develop it in his own way and you have of course Oma's Nico as well who went on to develop it in his own way as well so this area has a lot of significance in regards to the characters that we know Wakatsuki has fought before namely Oma and Fei Wang Fang. Agito also counts as well and he has performed dismally against all of them so he it seems like he's here to beat the allegations once and for all. And as I've said earlier, it's time to invest in the Wakatsuki stocks. Because the Julius stocks, they have plummeted and I'm telling you right now, they are never going to recover. The you, All the muscle power and these Wakatsuki is your final hope. But with that being said, we then go back to Nikoto and his conversation that he's having with Medell and Liu. To where they confirm that a lot of people, they're still progressing. He himself, even after losing to Agito again, hasn't really given up at this point. And it seems like they're gearing up to go up against the worm as well because Medell sort of hints at this idea and Liu is also like hey look I don't like Gaio I really don't but 
I also don't like the worm, which are apparently the bigger threat for Liu. But with that, we transition over to the fight itself. And that is Lo Long versus Agito. We get pretty good panels of both of them, you know, coming in, the stare down, all the cool stuff happening here. And again, the significance of this fight is being sort of hyped up by Jerry and Katsuhara and they even start going through their record specifically and this is where we start getting into some very interesting territory here and that is that both Agito and Lo Long have fought Jurata and it's pointed out that of course Lo Long has beaten Jurata twice before in of course Purgatory and Agito has lost to Jurata in a Kengen match. Now we get some thoughts from Hatsumi because he thinks the rules of these matches are very important because in a match in Purgatory for example there are other win cons that you could leverage against your opponent mainly of course ring outs as well as the fact that Jurata is nerfed in those fights. That's something that has been somewhat established that Arashiyama is just not suited to fighting in Purgatory whereas Lo Long he's a lot more flexible as a fighter. In other words don't take this record too seriously is the idea I'm trying to get at here but there is a monkey wrench here and that is Gao Lang because Gao Lang has only fought Agito and Jurata, but his match against Jurata is very important here because he's beaten Jurata before here. And so Hatsumi sort of points out that look, if we assume they're all relatively equal to one another, Lo Long has the better record than all of them because as of right now, he hasn't lost to any of these characters, so specifically Agito, Jurata, and Gao Lang. And because of that, he is of course the tentative champion. That's where the chapter name actually comes from. And so with that in mind, it sort of, I don't know, sets Lo Long up to be the man to beat in some way, let's say. But let's move on to the fight itself because we are now inching towards the fight, although we are towards the end of the chapter at this point. And it started off with Lo Long saying, hey, don't pull any punches, Kano. And Kano's like, hey, likewise. And I think at this point, we do know that Kano, Agito, and Lo Long Donair are sort of friends or buddy buddy at this point. Cause like they had their entire thing where they were both teaching Koga and there's also the fact that both of them came along with Kuroki to support him. So I think there is a lot more of a friendship and there's even the panel where Agito is cutting Lo Long's hair. I don't know if that's a fan picture or not. But yeah, they have some history it seems. And we get the referee from the anime. Now granted he is in the King and Ashura manga as well but they reuse him in the anime a lot and he's back seemingly from retirement for this one match and the match itself then starts and both of them just come towards each other like just straight up bullets and we get a huge flash and there's even some wind some gusts of wind we can see that from Akiyama's hair it's flowing as well so like there's a shock wave here now this is consistent with of course Kang and Omega scaling so it's not that big of a surprise honestly but the first clash is starting off really hard like they went right to each other and we see someone fall on his knee and it's confirmed to be Lo Long Donaire. He's on one knee and you can tell both of them have sustained damage already directly to their faces and Lo Long is like hey look you should follow up you know like I'm on one knee isn't this a good opportunity and Akito's like nah fam I'm not going there. So Akito is aware of how dangerous close up combat with Lo Long is so he's doing the wise thing at least in my opinion and that is it at least for now he's choosing to not engage him in close quarters combat because remember he's fight in his fight against Oma the times that Oma was able to get the better of Lo Long was typically when he brought in surprise factors like the advance 
and a whole bunch of other stuff as well. So Lo Long, he has close range locked down. So I wonder how Agito is going to actually deal with that. But yeah, that's it. That's the chapter. We just have that clash and it seems like Lo Long is probably going to recover a bit as well. And they're going to do the clash again, maybe. We'll see. But yeah, that is the chapter. Amazing start to this fight. Once again, I'll say it. And it was good to see an update on the the other characters in the series but yeah that's the review that's the breakdown don't forget to like and sub and until next time